Hi, friends, and a very pleasant good day. Thank you for joining uh, Jim Render and me for another edition of 15241 Today Talk. And uh, we're extremely pleased to have as our guest a gentleman that has been a part of the Upper St. Clair community for 28 years and the township manager for 12 years, Matt Sorokowski. Matt, thank you for joining us. Um, is it a case where a young person like yourself has a dream that someday, you know, age 13 or 14, you're saying, someday I want to be township <laughs> manager at Upper St. Clair? Well, or how was it that you ended up into this position? That's a very good question. And, and first, let me thank both of you uh, for having me uh, today. I know it's been a challenge uh, with my schedule and uh, the schedule's out there to uh, get, get me here. So uh, I want to thank you and thank you both for what you do uh, with the programming as well. Uh, yes, does one you know go to college and, and wake up one day and say they want to be a municipal manager? Um, actually, uh, it's an in interesting backstory. Uh, when I was going to undergraduate school uh, at Allegheny College in Meadville, uh, my part-time summer job was working for the public works department, local public works department, and uh, one of the full-time members that was there um, worked for the volunteer fire department. And uh, he said, we've got to get you into the fire department. They ran an ambulance service out of the fire department. Um, and I'm, the last thing on my list was becoming a volunteer firefighter at, at 18 years old. And um, he, he hounded me for a while and I eventually said and relented and said, OK, let's let's try this. And actually became an emergency medical technician uh, at 18 years old and started running the ambulance service uh, for the next seven, eight years. and kind of got the bug from there that I, I, I kind of realized I wanted to uh, help other people. And uh, continuing a career in local government uh, kind of steered my, my way from there. So then you went to the University of Pittsburgh. Your, your, your master's degree, what's the, what's the title of that? Or, or what does one do then when you go for a master's degree? Well, I went to the uh, University of Pittsburgh uh, Graduate School of Public and International Affairs, um, and you go through a track that you become uh, a, a master's in public administration uh, to take it either into the private sector uh, or the public sector, and I took the public sector track. What's the best part about your job? Oh, wow. Uh, there, are, there are many things. Um, as I said, uh, you know, at the onset uh, of my career, it was to help others. Um, uh, I enjoy working with our staff, uh, the volunteers. Um, it, it, there's so many things, almost, almost too much, excuse me, sorry about that. Um, uh, too many things to, to mention. Um, you know, having the opportunity to work with the school district, uh, our athletic association, uh, it's just a wonderful community to, uh, to work in. What um, what are the, the, some of the challenges that, that one faces as a, as a municipal manager? Well, uh, I think this last year alone is a, is a primary example of the, of the types of challenges that, that one, occur, you know, one incurs. Um, in, in February, March, uh, we were embarking on our planning priorities uh, for the township for the next two years. And uh, lo and behold, we're hit with a global pandemic uh, that no one could ever plan for, train for. Uh, no amount of uh, information you gain from, uh, from graduate school, undergrad, your, your teachings could prepare you for uh, what we had to deal with over the last seven and a half months. Um, closing facilities, figuring how, how to safely reopen and operate. Uh, those were all challenges that uh, we had to overcome and we continue to overcome. Uh, but we we're blessed with a tremendous staff here at Upper St. Clair. Um, and uh, we've been able to develop a number of programs, uh, allowing our residents to get back to some amount of normalcy in their lives. Um, a lot of that was, uh, you could see on our fields this summer, uh, when the USC Athletic Association resumed baseball, uh, when we reopened our recreational facility. Uh, so uh, the challenges come daily. Uh, you, you might have a plan for the day when you come into work, uh, but you never know when that phone's going to ring or when there's uh, something needed uh, that just changes your entire day. Uh, by the way, folks, um, you, you may have noticed uh, there was a fly that was <laughs> bothering Matt. 
<laughs> that fly came over and bothered me, so. He, he, he took a route. Did he get <laughs> past you me, as well? Yes. <laughs> okay, so d not Democratic or Republican. It's, it's, it's um, to, but to be a township manager in this great community, to be a great in part of Upper St. Clair. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed um, to uh, have the staff that we have here in Upper St. Clair. Um, uh, and I, I probably have to go back to uh, early in my career. Um, I started in 93 here in Upper St. Clair and uh, was hired by the former township manager, Doug Watkins. Uh, Doug is no longer with us, uh, but Doug was an incredible mentor uh, to work with for 15 years uh, that really helped me and, and, and helped guide my path uh, to uh, the manager's position. Uh, I, you know, I often tell people that I, I wouldn't do this job anywhere else. Uh, this is an incredible community to work for, and, and it's, it's really like that because of uh, its residents. Uh, the volunteers that we have on our boards and our committees, you know, that is our strength, uh, whether it's planning commission or parks and recreation. Uh, we have a lot of people that want to give back to the community uh, and make the community that much stronger. You had a big part in the Miracle League, uh, didn't you? I did. Um, uh, I, along with several of my staff members, uh, you know, we were uh, intimately involved in the development of the uh, Mayview, the former Mayview State Hospital property. Um, that evolved into what we see today with the ball fields and the recreation center, uh, the trails throughout our 500-acre park. Um, and an important component of that is, in fact, the Miracle League. Uh, we're lucky enough uh, to have uh, such a wonderful individual as Sean Casey. I know you've interviewed Sean um, in the past. And, uh, you know, Sean uh, and I uh, got together early on, and Sean wanted to give back to the community. And uh, he had talked about this Miracle League concept that we were seeing elsewhere across the United States. Uh, it's something that I had come across uh, as I have a, a love for baseball. Um, uh, Sean and I were able to get together and, and he shared his ideas and concepts and we tried to identify an area in the, in the township that we could accomplish this and as we were moving forward with the planning process for the Boyce Mayview development, uh, we found an area of ground that just fit perfectly and we've been able to grow the operation since then and it's something we're extremely proud of. But uh, I, I must give uh, credit to uh, Sean and, and uh, Tim Gebhardt, who is our executive director now uh, at the uh, Miracle League. Uh, they've done a tremendous job uh, in growing the operation, and they're moving forward with another phase of their development uh, that will include some, a job training center and, and concession and announcers area uh, that we're very proud of, and we look forward to that phase of the development. While we're talking about the uh the mayor, as he's affectionately known, John. I've always wondered this, and now I got an opportunity to ask an expert. What is the difference <laughs> between a township that has a mayor system and our township that has a, a manager system? That's a very good question. Um, as you note, there are various forms of municipal government. Here in Upper St. Clair, we have what is called a strong manager system. Uh, we are also a home rule community. Um, in our case, uh, we have no mayor. Uh, therefore, uh, all departments report to and through the township manager's office. Um, in a municipality that you would typically have a mayor, such as a borough, uh, the mayor is in charge of the police department. So the chief of police would respond to the mayor. In our case, the chief of police uh, answers to the township manager. Uh, we have a board of seven elected officials. Uh, five by ward, two at large, and the manager reports directly to uh, the board of commissioners. So all oversight in a, in a township like ours falls under my office, uh, whereas in a mayor form of government, uh, it varies. A mayor is more of a political position too, is that true? That is true, yes, that is correct. When, when you talk about the I'm assuming your job is not eight, eight to five or nine to five. Um, what goes into your typical day as that you're trying to do what's in the best interest of Upper St. Clair? Um, it is not 
just a nine to five type of job. It's uh, Monday through Sunday, all hours of the night. Um, I actually, uh, unlike maybe some people, I never turn my phone off. My phone is always on 24 seven. Uh, it sits next to my stand in my bedroom um, because something could happen at any given time, uh, whether it's an emergency at 3 a.m. Uh, or uh, a weather response. Uh, anything can change uh, on a dime. So a typical day, um, you know, may start at 5 or 6 a.m. Uh, checking over emails and, and text messages from uh, what may have happened the night before, checking over the police reports to see if there's anything that may uh, continue or require my follow-up with respect to the media um, into the day. Uh, generally, I have a fairly booked schedule uh, throughout the day. Um, may have staff meetings, uh, resident meetings, resident calls. Um, I try to stay up on all resident calls, and if I'm unable to get back to them, uh, we get the residents steered to the appropriate department that we can be very responsive to them. You know, we do not like uh, matters going unanswered. There's a lot of pride in, in that and in our facilities. Um, so it varies, and then it may spin in into the evening uh, for a, a, it's not uncommon to have an evening board meeting uh, or a meeting where I'm going to another municipality uh, to meet with uh, their municipality or a joint group. Uh, but yes, it's, it's well beyond an eight hour, typical, what, what one might think is a typical eight hour day. Is there an association of, of municipal leaders, for example, in this area, what are your contacts with, with Bethel Park and Peters and Mount Lebanon and some of the other surrounding communities? There's actually several agencies. Um, there is a municipal managers association here, not only in Western Pennsylvania, but statewide that we belong to. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have what is known as the South Hills Area Council of Governments. It's known as SHACOG. Um, municipal managers uh, from 22 communities belong to that group. and gives us an opportunity to share ideas, uh, concepts. Uh, we have a shared uh, police service, uh, police response uh, unit, a critical response team uh, that operates out of the SHACOG group. Um, we do joint purchasing through this group. Uh, so there's a lot of, there's a strong uh, entity within Western Pennsylvania that, that we, uh, we belong to, not only from a managerial standpoint, but an organizational standpoint. Um, in addition to that, uh, we do have a strong group, and, and I use the example of, of responding to the global pandemic. Um, you know, we had to figure out how to do business differently. How are we going to deliver business to our residents, remain open, um, you know, remain available? Uh, we just weren't going to shut the organization down. Um, so uh, a group of managers in the area from some of the largest municipalities uh, we got together and we hold uh, weekly virtual meetings. Uh, and we've done this since the onset of the pandemic uh, to share ideas, to share concepts, to run things up the flagpole. Uh, you know, how, it may be something as simple as, how are you going to reopen your library uh, amidst the pandemic? Uh, and if we can't open our library, how are we still going to remain engaged to the public? And it's, it's been a, a great group to work with and one that we will continue as, as we uh, continue to uh, uh, hopefully, uh, around the corner, emerge from from uh, you know, our dealing with uh, with COVID nineteen. I got another uh, bizarre question for you. Please, That's... as a guy who competed with Mount Lebanon, mm -hmm. Bethel Park, Peters Township, Chartiers Valley, is there is there some competition between township managers? Does it get a little competitive? It absolutely does. Uh, I, I would be uh, I would be lying if I did not say that. Yes, there is an amount of competition, uh, especially for many of us that you know are, are are come out of you know being an athlete, maybe in high school or college. You know, there's always that competitive drive, and that's what moves your organization as well too. Uh, and for instance, with Mount Lebanon, we do uh, have uh, some competition, and we actually hold uh, competitive events. Uh, with our staff members uh, each year. Uh, with Mount Lebanon, we, we actually hold our, uh, a little competitive golf outing, Ryder Cup type format where we bring our staff together 
Um, and, and it's really a team building effort on both, both parts, uh, but it also gets our you know, department directors to interact with their department directors. And uh, um, it's just another example of, yes, there is a competitive spirit amongst all of us. <laughs> but I mean, also within, in other words, if my Lebanon buys a new fire truck, do we buy a bigger and better one? Um, I would not say <laughs> that we jump into the deep end of the pool and do things like that. There, I will say that there is, um, you know, there's sometime a public expression to do that. I think we saw a lot of that uh, with, uh, you know, school district renovations and fil facilities that one school may be adding to another. Um, so we hear that from the general public. But at the end of the day, I think each and every municipality is, you know, keeping in mind, you know, conservative fiscal management and doing what's best for their municipality, uh, filling their needs. Uh, that's not to say that if, using your example, if Mount Lebanon would buy, you know, a certain fire truck, we wouldn't be communicating with Mount Lebanon to find out, you know, is, is there latest technology or, or other things available that we may want to consider if we're doing the same into the future. Go ahead, Lan. <laughs> Well, I, I want to go back to that, Moy, that Boyce Mayview complex. Um, I, I have tremendous respect for, for people that can, can think ahead and see a vision. Um, I, I remember when I was living in Upper St. Clair, um, we, we would walk over to that property um, and to see what a tremendous idea that was uh, with the baseball field, the softball field, the soccer fields. And of course, then the, the rec center and the swimming pool. Where were you in the beginning planning stages of that? Were you in the chair you're currently in now? Were you an assistant at the time? I was actually a, uh, the director of planning and community development and the, an assistant township manager. So what I was, a great idea. I was not in the, this, the chair I'm in. However, I was on the committee uh, that was part of the design layout and thought process that went through that. Uh, the board of commissioners had the forethought at the time uh, to put a small committee together. We called it the core team. Uh, and it was made up of two staff members, two elected officials that sat on the board, and two re residents. And uh, we worked through all of the elements of the development of Boyce Mayview Park, uh, held public meetings, uh, parsed ideas out, uh, whether it was the rec center, ball fields, trails, passive recreation that is also throughout the park. Um, so there, there was a large public process through that, uh, but yes, I, I sat right in the middle of it and, and um, had the pleasure of, of being a part of that. It's something we're extremely proud of. And, and what was the best decision you, you think you guys made? I don't mean guys, guys and gals made. I understand. When, in, as you look back now on that project. Um, looking back now, I think one of the best decisions was identifying uh, an area of the park to, to include it as the active recreation area. Uh, right now, you know, with it, it, the park's about 500 acres, um, only 13% of that park is active recreation. The remaining percentage of the park is passive recreation. And when I speak of that, I mean hiking trails and fields and um, environmental education areas. So we really took into consideration not just one area. I know people go down to the park and, and they see those fields and the lights in the evening and all that activity, but there is a, there is a lot of activity going on all throughout that park. Uh, whatever your interest is, we probably have it available within that park. Um, even to the point, I mentioned trail systems, uh, we have a five, five mile perimeter trail that we're working on finishing up uh, that encompasses the entire park and another 10 miles of interior trails within the park. But even in those interior trails, many of those trails are handicap accessible as well too. So we really try to take every idea in mind and all areas of the populace that we could serve within that park. Uh, and in the rec center facility. Is there room for development? Are there some, I, and maybe you can't share this with us, are there ideas on the uh, planning board there to other things that might be happening there? Um, nothing immediately on the horizon. Um, you know, as focus is on Boyce Mayview Park, we do have uh, 13 other parks within the township uh, that we do not want to, you know, neglect 
Uh, we have neighborhood parks. 13 other parks in this township. 13 other parks throughout the township. That's correct. Um, the next uh, largest park that we do have is Morton, the Morton Soccer Complex. Uh, and Coach may remember, you know, at one time that was the jewel of, of the township. Everyone wanted to, you know, play soccer and football and baseball up at the Morton <laughs> Complex. And you may have a, <laughs> a story. You did hit a little sore nerve. <laughs> I mean, football parents are taxpayers also I, it, yes. it bothered me that I, that was known as a soccer as a complex. soccer complex i finally got a little controversy in here linda <laughs> <laughs> i do recall that um but you know bringing up morton you know morton's another uh complex that we feel you know that is due for a little bit of attention we are looking at possibly in 2021 uh studying that park and uh recognize that you know it may need a more than a little more than a fresh coat of paint and, and some attention and that's something we'll be embarking on and hopefully in 2021 and it if may you, include additional uses have uh, you thought of any uh, artificial surface fields up there that is on that is on the table as a possibility yes good <laughs> when when people think of a community maybe they don't think of it from the standpoint that that the taxes pay dividends that that property values are are able to rise people because people want to live in in that community give, give us some of the the principles that one like yourself who studied a municipal government some of those key elements that go into decision making well in a community like Upper St. Clair where the expectations are extremely high uh, people are moving here with the idea of, of having some of the best facilities uh, available to, uh, to them, um, whether it's fields or trails. Um, and these are things that uh, as we present our and prepare our budget each year, uh, we have that in mind. Uh, we proudly can say that as we make those decisions, um, uh, we will, and at least I, I we will be re, uh, un, uh, re, unveiling the budget for 2021 here uh, again in the midst of a pandemic and we can probably say that uh, we'll be presenting a budget uh, that will keep taxes level for the 12th straight year in Upper St. Clair. So for us to be able to accomplish that uh, task uh, in, in the face of this pandemic and just challenges year in and year out and still provide the services that we provide to our residents, the fields that we provide, you know, doing studies of, of complexes like Morton, uh, continually upgrading our other parks in our neighborhoods. Uh, that's something that we, we pride ourselves on. And it's a challenge that the Board of Commissioners has presented to the staff year in and year out. Um, we hold uh, a two-year planning session, strategic planning session with our board, um, and we set our priorities for two years. And I can tell you number one on that priority list for our elected officials each year is to maintain the tax rate. They do not want to see a tax increase, but we want to continue to provide the services that the residents in Upper St. Clair have come to expect. You had touched on COVID a few moments ago. Um, what are the challenges there for you to make? The, the governor makes certain decisions. Uh, Allegheny County makes certain decisions. What, what are your powers or what are your concerns in terms of how you as township manager deal with COVID-19? Well, um, you raise, uh, you know, a, a good point with respect to decisions being made both at the Commonwealth and county level. And we have to remain in a position that we are able to pivot once those decisions are made. Uh, not always is there um, direct communication uh, from Harrisburg with respect to uh, maybe a decision the, the health department may be making on occupancy levels. Uh, or how many people you may have at an out outdoor event. Uh, when we receive that information, you know, our residents are already calling us, you know, whether it's uh, the uh, team that's having a, hosting a, an athletic event for the weekend and they want to know how are we going to deal with this. And our staff has been incredible over this period of time, uh, being able to uh, respond to that, uh, allow for uh, you know, events to continue and go off, uh, without, you know, a hitch generally. 
Um, and, uh, you know, we've been able to do that over the last several months. Um, again, it hasn't been without its challenges. Um, I have to give a lot of credit to uh, our incredible employees that we have. Um, and that's something that we've, you know, had to focus on throughout uh, our response to the global pandemic. Um, number one priority is the health and safety of our employees and the health and safety of our residents. Um, we, you know, worked very hard to get our tennis courts open back up again and our parks open back up again when, when other, other municipal entities may have, you know, said, we're going to keep it locked down, you know, we're not sure about this. Our staff was looking for areas and ways to get people back outside onto the fields, into our facilities, onto our trails. Um, and there's a lot of pride in what we've been able to accomplish and, and we continue to accomplish. You know, winter's right, ar right around the corner. You know, we're going to be moving our, our, our teams of public works employees back inside, you know, since they've been outside and we've been able to social distance and they've been able to work safely. We now have to look at how do we deliver service during the winter months? How do we keep up with the snow removal services that, uh, that we pride ourselves on here in Upper St. Clair and safely allow our workers to, to, to come to work and, and get in their vehicles and deliver that service. So there's, there's a lot that goes into it and it's ever evolving and it evolves right now with the seasons for us. Matt, you've made um, reference a couple of times to your great staff and you just also mentioned uh, public works. Uh, on a personal note, I'd like to tell you that George Kostelich and his assistant Dave <clears throat> greatly helped me with a sewer problem at uh, my house and uh, they came up with some ideas and some alternative uh, uh, routes that uh, were very much appreciative good guys oh wonderful I'm glad to hear that and and again it, it just doesn't it, it doesn't stop just with public works you know our public that. works police just... our library uh, but we're always glad to hear a good, uh, you know, a good story like that. And Matt, sure. tell us about your family. Well, um, I have three children. Uh, I am married. Uh, my wife Joanne and I have been married uh, 24 years now, and we have uh, three lovely children, uh, twin girls uh, that are seniors in high school, and my son Ty is uh, a sophomore in high school as well too. They keep us quite busy. Uh, very Abby and Emma, the seniors, uh, what keeps them busy? Uh, school, their grades, uh, academics, uh, sports. Uh, very, we're very much a sports-oriented family. Uh, uh, both my daughters played fast-pitch softball at one time and now play basketball and volleyball uh, in high school. Uh, my son is very active in sports as well, too. Plays uh, travel hockey, high school hockey, baseball, and on the varsity golf team as well, too. And what does your wife do for a living? Uh, my wife uh, is a director of sales for uh, MSA, Mine Safety Appliance, out of Cranberry Township. Um, do, do your children talk to you very much about your job, or do you talk to them very much about what you do, and do they appreciate the importance that, that you bring to this community? I think so. I, I think the, the one thing that my children have uh, you know, witnessed over you know, my, my many years here in Upper St. Clair is uh, my commitment to the community and, and to the public in general and the importance of giving back. Um, you know, I, I continued, uh, I, I started off with my story about you know, how I got into, you know, kind of steered towards public sector. Um, I, I remained uh, with the fire department and continue to uh, operate as a, a volunteer firefighter in the very free time that I do have. But uh, they've watched me over the years, um, you know, the pride I have in, in being able to help others and, and working for this community and the pride I have working for this community and individuals like yourself and the school district. And um, it's, it's just a, it's a great place to be. Uh, it's a wonderful community and something that I, I'm so proud to be working. Part of well, Matt, thank you very much for joining us, number one. And number two, congratulations to you and your staff for the wonderful work, the, the hard work that you're doing uh, to make Upper St. Clair the great place that it is. Thank you. Thank you very much, thank gentlemen. You, Matt. It's a pleasure sitting down. Thank, thank Matt Sarakowski, the uh, Upper St. Clair Township Manager, 
Our director producer, Glenn Ward. Our coordinating producer, Linda, Gun- Linda Dunzinski. Thank you for joining us on 15241 Today Talk.